Hi guys, I uh, just want to talk about finding happiness. It sounds like an easy thing to do, but often it's a case of um, realizing to be happy with what you've got already um, or changing it. Because um, one of the things that often become a problem in life and it can take too much control are things like finances, uh, bad relationships, um, and work issues. At the same time, I know some of the happiest people I know just do stuff they like doing. They're not wealthy people, they're not um, rising for expectations they'll never reach, or etc. For example, uh, I've got some friends who do horse riding, you know, they work at the stables, they teach people how to ride horses, they take kids, and, you know. It's not a well-paid job, it's a crap-paid job, but their life revolves around doing something they love and enjoy. The same as you can find here in Torvecha, people that teach surfing and things. It's not about money, it's about doing something you love. And that positivity drives through everything else, because if you're doing something you can't wait to get up in the morning to do, then you're half, halfway there. Um, finding the right partner is often something people don't really spend enough time on. Uh, and I say that with people that sort of jump into relationships because they've come out of another one or um, somebody's took an interest but they're not really that into them. It's just the fact that this, they've settled on something. I think you, you're better off actually being single for a while and developing and understanding exactly what you want in a relationship. And I know often it's pushed as being a bit selfish or whatever. Reality is, a relationship's got to suit both parties. Um, and that's why it's worth taking a bit of time and making sure things are right. Especially if you're doing things like going to the Philippines and meeting somebody for the first time or whatever. You don't have to marry that week, that month, that year. Um, better to spend time together because a lot of failed relationships are purely down to the fact that people weren't compatible in the first place. Um, so meeting the right person can take time. Meeting the person that's right for you and you're right for them takes even longer. Because um, sometimes you can be in a relationship with somebody where they suit your needs but they're not happy themselves. And it, it just takes a lot of effort to find the right person. But that's part of not rushing into these things. I mean, I actually enjoy being independent and single as much as I, well, not as much as being married, but um, but at the same time, it, it wasn't a case of I was unhappy being single. I was doing different things. My priorities are different. Um, the two different types of life but at the same time, some people need to be with somebody. And I think understanding a lot of those issues are insecurity, etc. And trying to find a way to deal with it and develop away from that will actually give you more confidence. And instead of settling for second best, if you're not lucky enough to find the right person the first time, um, you simply can be content with being with yourself or you can spend time finding the right person. Um, and that's more important than rushing into something. There is no rush. You're, you've got plenty of time. It's better to get it right first time than wrong four times, which is some of the divorces I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, you've got to find that bit of happiness. And the same with work balance, finding stuff that you actually like doing. Um, even when I see some of the work I've done in the past, I didn't like doing it, but I had a goal at the end of it. Um, so you can offset something with doing something you want to change. For example, working in a metal casting factory for a period of time while you're doing a college degree in something you actually want to do. It's paying the, paying the debt off, keeping you afloat, etc. And it may be dirty, smelly work, but at the same time, the bills are paid. So coming out the other end, you've got, you're have got you debt free, but also you've got a qualification to do something you want to do. And that, that, this is the, the thing. 
I think some people overlook the fact that many qualifications, um, they go off to university to get a qualification, which is what I call hobby qualifications. There is no job at the end of it because they've chosen a subject that has no uh, financial value. It's, it's something they like doing. And that is an example of something you may actually be better off doing something you want to do. Um, at the same time, it can be financially rewarding. Um, or doing something where you're working in something you're not 100% about, but at the same time, you can still do the college degree you want to do, and then maybe you decide to do something completely different later. But the whole point is you're trying to drive a work-life balance where you're getting the most out of it for yourself. Um, the same goes with family relationships and pretty much everything. You know, at the end of the day, you've got to analyze things on a regular basis. You've got to look at things and say, this is getting me down or whatever. If you've got debt, it gets you down. And I was talking to Gordon yesterday because Gordon brought up a good point relating to some of the financial sector. There is certain things that they're very wary of. That, you know, if you're in debt and you're struggling, if somebody actually says they're going to do something um, drastic, it can affect how the financial company will deal with you. But it also, burying your head in the sand doesn't fix this problem. It will keep you pe being negative and pulled down for a long period of time. You need to sit there, get yourself a little notebook, and sit and work out who you owe, how much you owe, and then approach them. Um, I say you approach them because if you pay somebody else to do it, and you do pay, whether you believe it or not, um, they say they'll do it for you, free consultancy, etc. But they're actually it will be on the top somewhere. Um, they can reduce payments and things. They can reduce some of the debt. They can get the monthly instalments reduced. You can do that yourself. If the worst thing for a financial provider to you is the word bankrupt. They do not want to hear you going down that road. So if you're saying, I'm in financial difficulty, can you help me with this? And that your payments are say 200 pounds a month or whatever, and you say, I can't afford that. I can only afford 50 now because I've got laid off work or whatever. Um, if they say, well, no, that's too low. They say, well, you know, well, I may have to just go bankrupt and there'll be a sudden break and say, well, we could do that for six months and then see how you are in there. And try and get them to freeze the interest, try and get them to work with you in your favor. At the end of the day, most of these people have already made money off your back anyway. Um, so the point being is you need to get that balance there where it's beneficial. Um, I know it's very easy to run up debt. I mean, this is one of the things me and Gordon were talking about yesterday. This, even the UK now, they're still throwing money at you. They're still trying to get you to get into debt. And the funny thing is, they have these like things like credit cards, which are very high risk, high uh, interest, just to get people that have got bad credit rating back into the system. Because um, they shouldn't be allowed to get a credit card because they're a high risk, but they are still manipulating it. Um, and getting them credit. But also it's a premium credit which costs them more money. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, and yes, in an ideal world, people should be able to manage their own money, but I have helped people that simply cannot manage money. I've spent hours on phones calling people for them um, where they've got themselves into debt for things that they should never have bought in the first place, or they've got into debt for things that were just scams. You know, like when they do these um, things like uh, these reverse calls in the uh, text that 12 pounds a week or whatever, they, you enter the, they entered on a website or something for a competition and you'll, be t you'll receive a um, text with whether you won or not. And then in a small print, and then, because you're involved in this, we will send you four texts a week that cost six pounds each, blah, 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 blah. And they never read that. And a lot of people don't read stuff online, but some people are very, very easily manipulated. And it's done that way. I know it's done that way. Companies go out their way to make this stuff happen. Um, 
It's like the telephone numbers. When you go to websites, a friend of mine got stuck with this with DVLA for a driving license for his niece. He went to a website. Now, the, the whole thing's free, normally, but they'd replicate the website um, to the point you couldn't tell it wasn't DVLA. And they got a high ranking because they're paying for advertising, etc. And it cost him £45 to do the, the paperwork, which is actually free. And they, they, this company hadn't done it either because you'd filled it in for them. All they were doing is submitting it on your behalf and taking £45. Thank you very much. There's a lot of stuff on the internet people get sucked into because there's a trust factor in there. Myself, if I'm not 100%, I'll just go to the post office. I mean, it's a bit more difficult here, but I'll get my dad to go to the post office for me. <laughs> um, but the, the point being is, getting into debt, people shouldn't be embarrassed about. Most of the world's in debt. Um, everybody's in debt to somebody. America owes the China trillions, I think. The UK um, doesn't even pay the interest on its debt. Um, so them sort of putting you under the microscope or your friends or whatever, I'll tell you what, all your friends are now will have some sort of debt themselves. Um, so it's just part of life these days. But how you deal with it is the important bit. Don't bury your head in the sand. Deal with it, take it head on. Take a bad day where you've got to call these companies up. And I know a lot of people dread doing it, but when you reduce your payments and everything, you'll feel a little bit better. Um, and ultimately change the way you manage your money. <laughs> change, don't do quizzes and stuff online if you get caught with some of this stuff as well. Just don't even do it. Um, what you want to be doing is looking at getting rid of your debt, start snowballing your repayments and stuff. So once you get rid of a credit card, for example, then start paying off something else fast as well. Um, probably the last one you want to pay is probably your mortgage uh, on the list because it's probably the one with the lowest interest. Um, but getting rid of your store cards, credit cards, car finance, and all the other bits and pieces that make your life a misery um, will make your life a lot easier. Um, I know myself, I don't have any credit cards, nothing. I've got debit cards, I've got no credit cards, I've got no loans, um, don't owe anybody anything. And there was something uh, somebody mentioned recently interest is you're either paying it or making it. And that pretty much sums it up. I've got to the other side. I'm, I'm in investing now. I'm not paying other people. They're now paying me. Um, well, companies are. Um, but the, the point being is, sometimes it's worth delaying things like a new car. A new car makes you happy for a moment. When you start getting that monthly statement on how much it's cost, um, it's not happiness. It's... Um, You'd be better off with a four-year-old car that you could pay for in cash, or you can pay it off in a year, than a brand spanking new car that loses three thousand pounds as soon as you drive it off the forecourt. Um, yeah, manage your money better, you'll be happier. And the same goes for pretty much everything in life. Analyze everything. I sit there and I do analyze a lot, of pretty much anything. If somebody's offering me something, I want to know why. You know, somebody turns around and says, well, we've got a free holiday or something. Why is it free? And then when you say that, you're instantly getting the, the pause because there's, well, what do you mean? I'm giving you a free holiday. No, you're not. Well, you just have to go to a presentation. I was like, ah, but it's not a free holiday then. You're trying to sell me a property in Florida or whatever. <laughs> <coughs> but the point being is, you can manage this stuff. You can get on top of this. You can get your life the way you want it you can downscale you know if you've got a four bedroom house and there's only you because the kids left home why do you need to keep their empty bedrooms for them just in case they decide they want to come back or they've got a relationship issue guess what they're on their own now they're adults you can get a smaller place and then you get some of your money back that you invested in that property you paid off and you can do other stuff with it you can, I mean, my father does a lot of photography and things like that. Does a lot of traveling around now. Now he's retired. You could do exactly the same. It's your money, your house. Enjoy life. Um, I know some people talk about how you should leave stuff behind for kids. 
my view on this is is nice to do that and myself I will be leaving some stuff behind because I'm still quite young and as such they'll be left with some sort of legacies behind um, whether it's some apartments or something else um, but the point being is I'm in a position to do that if you're not don't feel bad about it at the end of the day you enter this life with nothing and you probably worked all your life to pay your house or whatever off why are you giving it away you know at the end of the day you pay for it it's yours uh, your kids are old enough to look after themselves once they get to that age but if you're in a position to leave something behind so do it but don't feel obligated don't feel that you have to remove something from your own life to accommodate other people's Anything that's uh, not respected, I question. It's like when I, in the Philippines, when, when I gift stuff, as soon as people expect it, I stop giving it. You know, if I go back to the Philippines and I'll take gifts for people, um, the next time if somebody, they, they're trying to get through your bags to find their presence, they tell you what, there will be no presence ever again um, because it's disrespectful. Your gift is not because you're going home. It's because you, you personally made the decision to buy other people. shouldn't be peer pressure. shouldn't be you must do. It's your money, your decision, your choice. As soon as people start removing that from you, remove it from them. And you'll find life's a lot happier when you start balancing all these things and driving towards your own sort of independence and seeing where people are doing things to you where you turn around and say, no, that's stop it. That ain't happening anymore. And start and be more assertive and sorting your life out to the way it should be. Make yourself happy. Thanks for watching.